Welcome to In a Heartbeat, coming to you from the studio of WMTV Channel 5 in Gross Point Farms at the Gross Point War Memorial. We are broadcast throughout southeastern Michigan on AT&T UVerse on Channel 99. I'm Dr. David Bali, and I'm your host for In a Heartbeat. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and breast cancer is a disease that affects far too many women in America. However, there is good hope with advances being made in research and treatment. To highlight the awareness that we should all have about breast cancer, I'm delighted with my special guest today who will help us to go through some of those issues. And her name is Dr. Cheryl Wieson. Dr. Wieson, a warm welcome to In a Heartbeat. David, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Wieson, I think it would be uh, a good idea, maybe just to start out, tell our viewers a little bit about your practice and the okay. types of things that you're involved in in medicine. Great. Um, well, David, for the last um, five years, I've been the medical director of the St. John Providence Breast Program. That's a comprehensive breast care program where we t um, help patients who are newly diagnosed with breast cancer to have the specialists that they need to have the information of how to care for themselves to really try to optimize their care and provide them with all of the resources that they need in this journey of um, their breast cancer diagnosis. In my private practice, I see patients with non-cancer diagnoses um, and breast complaints and hope to help them um, both identify whether or not they have a significant problem and to reassure them if it, things are fine. Uh, you mentioned about the Comprehensive Care Center and maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about that and why that may be important. Okay, um, well breast cancer in particular has really progressed, breast cancer care has really progressed so much in the last few years that um, a multidisciplinary approach where surgeons and medical oncologists and radiation oncologists um, get together with the pathologists and the radiologists to really evaluate each individual person's particular situation to optimize their care to try to get the best possible results. And by meeting together and bringing all of our individual expertise to um, the evaluation of each patient, we feel that we can provide them the very best care that we can. Excellent, and to coordinate that together as Absolutely. part of the team. Yes. Dr. Wieson, uh, maybe we should start off uh, by saying, what are the major risk factors that people should be aware of when it comes to breast cancer? Well, it sounds a little silly, David, but the biggest risk factor is being a woman. Um, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that sounds a little self-evident, but um, and age. So as women in this country age and become older, their risk for developing breast cancer increases. Many people think that, in fact, I had a, a patient just the other day who's 91 and she said, I'm too old to have breast cancer. But the reality is that as we age and continue to age, um, the risk of developing breast cancer continues to increase. Most women get breast cancer above the age of 60. We're obviously very concerned about the younger women that can develop breast cancer, but um, those factors are the, the highest factors for breast cancer. We can't modify those. <laughs> um, the other things that are important risk factors are family history. Um, that doesn't um, pertain to most patients, and that's actually a misnomer. Most people say, well, there's nobody in my family, so how could I have had breast cancer? But if there is breast cancer in the family, it's an important risk factor. We know that um, the amount of exercise that a woman take, partakes in is a very important um, factor to decreasing risk. And um, some of the latest studies have shown that women between the age of 12 and 22, so young women who have a lot of exercise or moderate exercise have a decreased risk of developing breast cancer. That's, that's uh, great to know for parents and so many women 
and girls are fortunately more involved in sports That's than right. athletics in schools, and that hopefully will make a difference over time. That's right. Um, and at any age, um, physical activity is beneficial. Um, it seems to be especially beneficial for the young women, but but at any age, if we, we start to have more activity, that's, that's an important uh, modifiable risk factor so that we can really take charge and have control over things that we can manage. And that's um, a little bit about what we're going to be talking about <clears throat> is how to empower yes. women and people in general to, to address those risk factors and take control. That's right. Um, Diet also has some impact. Alcohol in particular has been shown to be associated with um, development of breast cancer. So there's really a linear relationship. The more alcohol, the higher the risk of developing breast cancer. Um, that also is a modifiable risk factor, it's one that's in, in our control. Mm -hmm. um, we know that women who take hormone replacement after menopause um, for more than five years have a slightly higher risk of breast cancer. Um, and, and all these factors together can add up. The one other factor that we can't change but is an important, increasingly recognized as an important risk factor is breast density. Breast density is identified on the mammogram and it's the amount of breast tissue within any woman's breast. And we know that women who have high breast density on a mammogram are at higher risk than women who have mostly fatty breasts. We can't change that. It's just to know that about yourself. And that's an important question I think that women should ask yes. when they have their mammogram is, what is my breast density? Do I have very dense breasts? So that those women realize that they're at higher risk than someone who has less dense breasts. And continuing with that same vein, are there any things, and you've touched upon some of them, but yes. there are there any other things that women can do to reduce their risk of breast cancer? Um, is vitamin D, I think you talked to me about one time. That's right. Vitamin D is another um, risk factor that, again, is, is relatively new in our understanding, especially in Michigan and especially um, women who are of northern European descent. Mm -hmm. um, they often have low vitamin D levels. And so it's important that vitamin D levels are, are assessed as we wear lots and lots of sunscreen. We get vitamin D from the sun through our skin, but with lots of sunscreen and being um, conscious about that, we get less sun exposure than we might have. So mm -hmm. um, taking vitamin D as a supplement is a very um, easy thing to do and women should check their vitamin D levels. And if they're low, to take supplements to improve it. I think somebody's vitamin D level is one of those sort of stealth things that That's unless <laughs> you check for it, you'd have no, you would probably know. no idea. It's nothing that you would feel or mm -hmm. have any knowledge about your vitamin D level. It is only, the only way to know it is to have a blood test. When it comes to an adult uh, female uh, in regards to exercise or consumption of alcohol, are there any recommended guidelines or not something that specific? Well, with exercise, it's, it, there are um, 30 minutes a day for at least five days a week. And there is benefit to moderate intensity exercise and added benefit for higher intensity exercise. So I think any exercise is good. Mm -hmm. um, and to a point, probably the more the better. Um, the figures I've seen is after 100 minutes a day, there's no added benefit. That's a lot of exercise. <laughs> um, and for alcohol, the recommendations for women is a one drink a day. Mm -hmm. And so that's a five ounce glass of wine or a 12 ounce beer or um, a one and a half ounce of hard liquor. And that's uh, good that you illustrated that. I, I think that puts something into more of a concrete term. Well, sometimes, you know, this is one <laughs> one cup of coffee, but that's probably two cups. So. <laughs> Everything is supersized <laughs> that's today. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, what role do genetic mutations play in the development of breast cancer? They're a very important role for those people that have the genetic mutation. The one that we think of most for breast cancer is BRCA1 and 2. 
but only about 5% of women who have breast cancer have a genetic mutation. Mm -hmm. So for that 5% of women that do, it's very, very important. It means that they're more likely to get breast cancer at a younger age. They're more likely to get breast cancer in both breasts, not just one. And so their risk factors are, are very, very high. But the other 95% of women with breast cancer don't have that mutation. Mm -hmm. um, and really, 75% of women with breast cancer have no family history at all. So although we always ask about family history, mm -hmm. um, its relevance for most women is not very great. Um, it, can, it, can it be possible, Dr. Wiesen, that if, if a woman has develops breast cancer at a younger age, is there any relationship to it being more aggressive or not necessarily? Not necessarily. It's the um, problem is that it's sometimes identified at a little later time and that's due to a variety of reasons. Younger women tend to have um, breasts that are more difficult to evaluate by mammograms because of their age. Um, some, because most younger women don't have breast cancer, sometimes abnormalities are watched for a while before a diagnosis mm -hmm. is made. And so there, there can be reasons that there is a delay in diagnosis in a young woman. Um, which makes it seem more aggressive, but it's only because it wasn't identified as quickly as it might have been in someone else. Is there a higher incidence of breast cancer in certain geographic locations, and are there environmental factors that are involved? There are definitely differences, and, and here in the points, um, there's a lot of awareness, I think, that we, tend, we have a little bit higher risk of breast cancer in the Gross Point area. It's known across the country that higher socioeconomic communities tend to have a higher incidence of breast cancer, and it's probably multifactorial. Um, delayed child rearing um, is a factor. We don't know the specific chemicals, but there's a lot of chemicals in our lives, you know, on the lawns, on the trees, in our cleaning products. And some of those chemicals, which are frequently fat soluble so that they accumulate in breast tissue may well contribute to the development of breast cancer. Well, while you're talking about that, can some of the more organic fertilizers and types of things, can they uh, be substituted to reduce that risk or is that not a factor with that? Well, we think so, but it's not, it's not known exactly. I, it's very hard to sort out the particular chemicals that might be involved. There are some people that are very um, interested in this issue and and want to use um, even makeup and um, you know cleaning products that don't have any of these chemicals in them with the thought that there might be some relationship but I don't know that we know that exactly mm -hmm. there probably is an influence we just don't know exactly how much influence and what particular items might be most susceptible 